Somebody back in the 1930s, I wish I could remember, who had a contest for the worst headline of all time, and the winner turned out to be Franz Ferdinand found alive, World War I fought by mistake. Well, I have the stupidest headline, and it's been everywhere. Trump is going to start World War III with Iran. No, he's not. Hey, everybody, I'm Steve Green with Bill Whittle and Scott Ott, and this is Right Angle, brought to you by the members of BillWhittle.com. And I don't know what... Well, of course you saw this, even if you aren't on social media. There was no way to miss all the World War III talks. It wasn't just social media, although that's where it picked up first. I, I, I just I collected a bunch of headlines for you guys just to show you how widespread and ultimately stupid all this is. Uh, World War III trends on Twitter after U.S. assassinates Qasem Soleimani. Uh, the killing of Qasem Soleimani is tantamount to an act of war. That's from The New Yorker, which used to be a fairly staid magazine back before it got all shrill and PC. Uh, is Trump really about to start World War III? Here's what we know. <laughs> no, that's from The Independent, another one of those formerly respectable publications. Uh, Trump, oh, this is a good one. Trump fulfills neocon wet dream of provoking war with Iran from the Free Thought Project. That might be, uh, they might have left out a from in their name. Uh, U.S. president may claim that the strike on Iran's Soleimani was meant to stop a war, yet it will do anything but... That's from Foreign Policy. Again, a once pretty staid publication. Uh, Trump celebrates new decade by trying to start World War III. That's from Truth Out. Or as I like to say, Truth Out. Uh, <laughs> World War III trends as hawks rejoice at Trump decision to assassinate Iranian military leader. Uh, oh, and the subhead on this one is hawks are celebrating Soleimani's assassination, not because they believe it weakened Iran, but because, and I love being told what I think, but because they believe we have passed an irreversible point of escalation. That's right. Trump didn't just start World War III, but uh, those of us on the right are just, oh, finally, we get the world war we've been dying for all these years. <sighs> Scott, is it any wonder we're all just going nuts on social media when this is the type of stuff we get from not just respectable uh, magazines, but uh, the, the blogs that we read and trust? Well, it's been the great blessing of the last year of my life to have been completely disconnected from social media, so I don't get uh. to see that kind of barrage. However, I, I will tell you that there is a um, an almost narcotic effect because of the algorithms that social media use. Mm -hmm. If they see that you're interested in something, they'll give you more of that something, and they'll give you, essentially, they will uh, very quickly channel you off into a, uh, a world where everything seems to be the way it is is. <laughs> In other words, if you if the first article you read says that we're that Trump is starting World War III, then they'll give you more articles that Trump is starting World War III. And after a yeah. very short period of time, you'll believe that everybody is saying that Trump is starting World War III. And therefore, it must be so because all the news you're reading is saying that. And that's one of the great dangers of these algorithms that feed you more of what you've already eaten. Um, and so, you know, that you have to kind of intentionally break out out of that sphere, even if you're going to stay on social media and not be, you know, a hermit and Amish like I am. Uh, but if you're going to stay there, you've got to intentionally go, okay, what is it that I'm not seeing because the network is feeding me what it thinks I want? Um, and so, you know, that's a troubling aspect of it, uh, but something that you can remedy. The other thing is, think about it. For most people alive today, the last world war started 78 years ago or thereabouts, 79 years ago, something like that, yeah. depending on which country you're in. Um, and so it's been a long time since we've seen what ge what the genesis of a world war is. And all of, uh, you know, those of us who know anything about it only know what we've been taught or what we've read about. And so we haven't been through this before. We haven't seen what the lead up to a world war looks like. And by golly, it sounds like a pretty serious thing when you take out the guy who's the head of a terrorist organization in the country that hates the United States more than any country on earth, or at least we're led to believe. So I say all of that to say, I don't think it's completely unhinged or irrational the way people react to what they're seeing, but I do think you've got to kind of take control of your own mind and the, and the stream of information that comes into it and make intentional efforts to educate yourself beyond the scope of that which is being fed to you.
You know, Scott, you raise a couple of good points, and one of them, this just occurred to me, and I can't believe it's just occurring to me because I've been blogging for almost 20 years, if you can believe that, is that uh, our jobs require us to read things every day that we disagree with. It requires us to, yep. to dig deep into the other side's view and to at least have a, a passing familiarity with it, if not, it, hopefully, a, a deep understanding of it. And that gives us, a, I think, just a, a tremendous advantage in, in relaying this kind of information to our viewers. The other is, Scott, uh, you didn't quite connect these two dots, so I'm going to do this in my setup for, for Bill's question. The algorithms are really dumb. I mean, really seriously dumb and repetitive. Uh, how many times you buy something on Amazon, you know, one of these once in a decade purchases, you get a, a 65 inch 4K TV to stick on your on your living room wall. And suddenly everything you see, every ad you see is, well, I see you bought a 65 inch 4K TV. Would you like to buy one of these three other 65 inch 4K TVs? How about another one? <laughs> What the hell? What the, the, the algorithms are just, they are, they're, they're repetitive and just absolutely stupid. We keep hearing about artificial intelligence, but Bill, we've got a lot more of the artificial than the intelligence, don't we? Hmm. You know, it's not even a question of intelligence. It's, it's a question of, of uh, education. Uh, one of the reasons that uh, people like me so despair about the state of the current public education system is because it provides no history and without any history, yeah you might be inclined to think that this would be a world war. If you don't know what a world war looks like, it's a war. It's not even a war. If it, it turns into a shooting war, it'll be a war and it'll happen in the world. So I guess it must be a world war. <laughs> the idea of an existential conflict that is going to determine the future of this society as a civilization. Uh, we haven't had a threat like that since 1941. And you could argue that even... Uh, if things had gone very, very badly in World War II, and they went badly in some places, but even if the worst cases at all, car if all the worst cards had turned up in World War II, we would have we would have come out on on top on that one just because we started from such a strong position. But uh, a World War looks like you know uh, we have two functioning aircraft carriers. We're going to do 24 hours worth of repairs on a third. We're going to send them out in the middle of the ocean where we're going to meet four enemy aircraft carriers, seven battleships, 42 destroyers, and so on. These are the people who just bombed our facilities with six aircraft carriers. These people have not been beaten or stopped anywhere. That's what the United States facing a world war looks like. But when you've got, when you're, when you're on the team that has 11 nuclear powered carriers strike uh, groups with attendant destroyers, uh, picket escorts, uh, submarine escorts, and so on. And you're going up against a Navy that has Boston whalers. This is not a, a, this is not a world war. That's not to say there's no threat from the Iranian gunships or, or Iranian shore batteries. It's not, I'm not that ignorant. But the fact of the matter is, in order for it to be a world war, it's got to be a war on a, on a global scale. And our opponent in this conflict that is probably not going to happen anyway has no global scale. This is the thing. See, everybody is so terrified. This is the thing that is the most important thing. And it's been the history of this country. And I understand how it works. We are so, we have, we are so terrified about, um, about war, rightfully so. Obviously nobody, nobody who understands anything about war is in favor of war. Uh, but we have been so isolated from, um, from the consequences of, of this that I guess what I'm trying to say is we we don't have a right to not expect to ever have con a, a world with no conflict. And and, yeah. and 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 when conflict appears, it it's kind of like it's kind of like watching these transgendered athletes winning events by two and a half seconds. It's like, this isn't supposed to happen because I don't want it to happen. I don't want this to happen. My philosophy says that if this person feels like a, a, a woman, then he is a woman and, 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 and is in fact a woman. It's like transmutation. And, and so when, when reality rears its ugly head and confronts you with things that are, that are, that you haven't had to deal with, it can be a shocking experience for people. But I guess that the, the main thing is we are so concerned about about what they can do to us because we have had things so, so good and have so much to lose. But if you were to sit there and put on paper the two forces, you really would find yourself in a situation of a, of a 40 foot giant, you know, 
who's terrified of a mouse, just absolutely running in fear of, of this little thing because I believe that the best way to keep this country safe and out of war is to have other countries fear going to war with us more than we fear going to war with them. Absolutely. And that's why we spend $300, $400 billion a year to have 11 nuclear-powered carrier strike groups and God knows how many um, uh, Air Force wings and, and so on and so forth. The, the final thing I'll say on it, I know Scott wants to deal, deal with this in a slightly different uh, angle on, a, on another right angle this week. But the thing that I would like to say about this is having learned some lessons from the last time we were in this situation, not only do I not worry about American troops uh, being uh, particularly suffering high casualties in a situation, if things go the way that I would expect they would go, the Iranians will never see any American troops. They won't, they won't, no, no. They won't ever see, they well, will never see an American soldier. That's how I expect if it if it decide if they decide they want to we didn't start this. We didn't take over their embassy in 1979 and we didn't attack their embassy just a few uh, weeks ago. So if they want to continue to do things like shoot down drones over international waters and and board uh you know neutral flagship they want to keep pushing and keep pushing then sooner or later they're going to realize it's not the same team that sent them 800 million dollars on a cargo pallet and then they're going to find out that, that that they're dealing with something different and my hope is my serious hope is is that when donald trump makes a decision to launch a strike like this he sends them enough of a signal so that they understand that they are dealing with a country that can keep drone strikes going 24 hours a day over their entire surface area for the next 20 years. And maybe they'll begin to realize that this is not the same kind of people that they used to push around for the last 35 or 40 years. Yeah, one would hope. Uh, folks, let me talk a little sense to you. If you'll allow me that indulgence, it is something of an indulgence in this postmodern era. Uh, Angela Cotavilla had a, a great column, I think, in American uh, Greatness just a couple of days ago, where he explained that both Obama and Trump want to get us out of the Middle East. Obama's way of trying to do that was to boost Iran to kind of create this perfectly tuned and very imaginary balance of power between Iran and the Arab world. And of course, that didn't work. Uh, Trump's idea is to try and put Iran back in the box it came in before January of 2009. And the strike on Soleimani is a part of that, of, of, of taking, as Richard Fernandez said at uh, PJ Media a couple of days ago, of taking the shadow war out of the shadows by doing something so flagrantly public that Iran has to, uh, uh, you know what, or get off the pot. The idea is to get them off the pot. That said, by my count, there, there have been five world wars. Only two got the name, but five world wars. There was the, the Seven Years' War, which spanned five continents over seven years and involved two huge coalitions, one led by Britain, the other by France. You have the Napoleonic Wars, which were technically several wars, but really one conflict uh, over one big issue. Was the European peace going to be going to be kept by a single French dictator, or was it going to be kept by a uh, concert of nations that was established by Metternich in, in 1815 after the, the Battle, Battle of Waterloo? Uh, and then, of course, you've got the, uh, the World Wars, and the less said about those, the better, because they were just awful. And then you have the Cold War, which was unique in that the main antagonists never really fought each other directly, at least not officially. Um, and so those are our, our five world wars, and this Iran thing doesn't match up to those in any way whatsoever. It just doesn't. Iran doesn't have a coalition. The Mullah's regime is uh, 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 tolerated by some. It's despised by many and loved by absolutely no one. They will never put together a coalition, and we already have one. Uh, this is something you'll never see in the mainstream media. There is already an anti-Iran coalition. It includes the United States, it includes Israel, and it includes the uh, the Gulf states led by Saudi Arabia, and in a pinch, probably the Egyptians too. So we've got a lot of good people on our side, or at least some people willing to fight. That said, let me finish with, with just one final thought. When you read these, these scary headlines, whether you see them in uh, social media or, or from the mainstream media, I want you to think back to my favorite bit of dialogue from Atlas Shrugged. And picking a favorite bit of dialogue from Atlas Shrugged is like 
picking your favorite glass of water in the desert. There's not a whole lot there. <laughs> but there is a there is a great moment when uh, our heroine Dagny Taggart is in a high speed plane pursuit of the man she thinks is destroying the world. She's finally located him. She's chasing his plane down and her little Cessna type plane. And she gets in a crash trying to track him down. And as uh, the man she thinks is her enemy uh, pulls her out of the wreckage and is holding her there in his arms, she looks up and says, we never had to take any of it seriously, did we? And he says, no, we never did. And there you have it. That's your right angle on that. Brought to you by the members of BillWhittle.com. I'm Steve Green. And if you want to find out what it's like to drink with me, go to BillWhittleCruise.com. Maybe I'll see you there on the cruise ship. It'll be a lot of fun. Thanks for tuning in, and we'll see you next time. 